Mike Sports Vibes. Thank you for vibing with me. You know who I'm repping. It's the off season, but it's all good. We made a couple of moves. We made a couple of moves. Well, one move. We got rid of Doc Rivers, which is not all his fault. I just want to break this down real quick. It's not all on Doc Rivers. It's definitely on the MVP, Joel Embiid, and it's definitely on a former MVP, a former scoring champion, James Harden. So, Doc Rivers had to go. I already knew. But this is my, this is my thing, right? I don't want the media to try to make it seem like it was all on Doc. Yeah, Doc made some mistakes with the rotations, obviously. But it's definitely falls on the superstar of the team, and that's Joel Embiid. He did not play like he needed to play in Game 7. The second half was by far the worst second half I ever seen in a superstar to have the potential to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. It was terrible performance by Joel Embiid and James Harden. And they're going to get a boo from me because that was terrible. And 76 76er fans deserve a lot better. We, de we, we deserve so much better. We went through the process. We were terrible for numerous years. We need and we deserve better effort from our superstar and James Harden. They did not show up. I don't know what Doc Rivers said at halftime, but they had no type of energy, no type of effort. I don't understand it. They get a boo. <laughs> boo. <laughs> Terrible performance. But let me get straight to the point. I ain't going to keep this video too long. Let me get to the point. Mike Bodenholder. If I jacked his name up, I apologize. And I really, I'm sorry. Mike Bodenholder. If I jacked his name up, I'm sorry. But I, he's my number one candidate to be the 76ers future head coach. He won the title in 2021. He already has experience with a dominant big man. You know, I mean, Giannis is more that he plays power forward, but he can definitely play center if he really wanted to. And uh, I think he has that experience, and I think he knows how to build a team. I think that he's, he has it in him. I like Mike Bodenholzer. He's my number one pick to be the next 76ers head coach. My second pick, I'm going to just say this guy because he won a championship with the Lakers in the bubble, Frank Vogel. But in my opinion, I just something about him I'm not really feeling. It's just my personal opinion. I just think he's not the right guy in my personal opinion. But if I had to choose right now, it would be Mike. And then I will go for second will be Nick Nurse. Yes, I know. Sixer fans are probably like, nah. Nah, bruh. Nah. I understand it, ladies and gentlemen. I understand it. But he has that experience. He won the first title, the only title in Toronto Raptors history. The man, when he had a superstar, Leonard, and it kept on bouncing when he shot it in Joel Embiid's face because Joel Embiid was late to get to him. And it bounced a couple of times on the rim. And it went in. And they won. They won the game. But at the same time, right, I understand that he knows what he's doing. He makes the right adjustments. He's a good freaking coach. I would not mind having Nick Nurse. He's my second pick. If I had to choose between all the coaches that are available. When I say Mike, I am not saying Mike D'Antoni. Keep Mike D'Antoni away. He is a very good court, uh, not quarterback, a very, very good offensive minded head coach. But he doesn't coach defense and we need defense. I need a, and he doesn't have the experience. I want to have a coach that has the experience not to just get past the second round. Not just to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I want a coach that won the dang on finals. We only have a little bit more time left if we keep Joel Embiid. So I'm and I'm just keeping it real. How many realistic, how many years realistically do we have Joel Embiid in his prime? You know what I mean? So, and you know, there's other candidates. They say Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell has a, a really, really, really good relationship with. Tyrese Maxey, and he could be, he could be good, but at the same time, he doesn't have that experience in the finals, coaching in the finals. And like I, I, 
I need that experience. And I like Sam Cassell, but I really just want to win. We haven't won since 1993, and I'm tired of freaking losing. The My third candidate, even though he didn't win, he didn't win in the finals, he knows the 76ers culture. He knows he knows and likes Joel Embiid. It would be Monty Williams. He was the assistant coach to Brett Brown. So he knows the culture. He knows what we're what we're hungry for. We're trying to get a freaking championship, and I'm tired of losing. If I was going to hire a coach that doesn't have experience in the finals, coaching in the finals, it would be Monty Williams because he knows the team already. He knows the pulse of the Philadelphia fan base. We deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve freaking better. Let's go Sixers, man. You know who I'm repping all day, every day, win or lose. You know what I'm saying? You know the vibes, baby. You know the vibes. But um, thank you for vibing with me. But yeah, those are my candidates that I would personally choose. Stay away from Mike D'Antoni, please. Do not make that mistake. And please get rid of James Harden. Do not keep James Harden. He is not the right player. He is, he, he's just not the right. He's a good player. I don't think he's washed. But in the playoffs, he just did not show up. Nine points, game seven. Joel Embiid had 13 points, one rebound at halftime. He finished the game, I believe, it was 15 points. So he scored 15 points the whole game with eight rebounds. That was absolutely a no. He wasn't there. They both wasn't there. To poor Tyrese Maxey, how can he do what he needs to do when your star, your, your MVP is not balling? And they, James Harden wasn't balling. So it's just like you can't put that all on Tyrese Maxey. And Tobias Harris, they need to figure out what they're going to do with him in this in the offseason. They got to do something. They have to do something. But, yeah, I am looking forward to the offseason. I will be going live multiple times this offseason to talk about breaking news. And as always, I don't want to talk to you to death. And as always, as always, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you vibing with me. If you're a Philadelphia 76er fan, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And I'm out.